Hey, welcome into a bonus episode of Stone Cold Strohs. I'm Brandon Strange alongside Josh Jordan. Follow him on X at Josh Jordan 975 and read his work daily on sportsmap.com. Click like on the video if you haven't already. Subscribe to the channel and click that bell for notifications so you can follow along with us all season as we make our way to the postseason, hopefully, fingers crossed. And if you're a Texans fan, Josh, Charlie, Palillo, and myself launched our second season of Texans on Tap, our Houston Texans podcast. We'll be doing live reactions following every game this season, including this Saturday after Giants Texans. You can find that over on our other YouTube channel, Sports Map Texans, or in audio form at your favorite podcast apps. Josh, as we record this, uh, Astros are the hottest team in MLB with sole possession of first in the West. A couple things that have come up that you and I I have kind of com- you know conversed about offline, exchanged texts about during the season, and we thought it was a good time to talk about it right now. And that is how Joe Espada and Yiner Diaz, Diaz have contributed to the turnaround this season. It's hard to look at the current situation, though, without wondering what could have been last season had Yiner played more, uh, which Dusty Baker told all of us that we'd thank him for. He was very much married uh, to Martin Maldonado behind the plate, you know, as we have covered endlessly on this channel. And I want to assure everyone right out, right out of the bat, this isn't just a revisionist conversation. There are things that we can learn about this season and looking at the big picture. So let's start with Yiner. Um, what have you seen or what are you seeing out of Yiner that makes you reflect differently on how last year played out versus this year? I think he's getting to play regularly. That I, I think that's the biggest thing. He's not pressing as much because he doesn't have to go above and beyond to to crack the starting lineup. It's it was a thing with Dusty Baker where he was set with Maldi and and for years, remember, you know, Click traded for Vasquez. They didn't really use him that much. They tried to trade for Wilson Contreras. Dusty reportedly rumored to get that trade vetoed through Jim Crane. So that didn't go through to keep Maldi going. And then when you have, you know, Yiner Diaz coming up last season and, and really showing you something, he didn't really feel like he was quite ready. So I think that it's it's about Yiner getting opportunities and Chandler Rome had a, a piece this week in the athletic where, you know, he talked to Alex Centron kind of about what's going on with Diaz. And they just think that he was so under pressure to inflict damage with every opportunity he got last year that, that it made him press and that, you know, Dusty Baker didn't really want to try him very much at other positions. He really only saw him as a backup catcher or maybe a DH. So that kind of limited his opportunities. So when I look back at it, and how that ended last year, I mean, let, let's keep in mind, Maldi got cut this year. He got DFA'd on the worst team in baseball and basically got a manager fired <laughs> because he wanted to play him. And if we look at the numbers from last year, Maldi finished before he was released this year with a, a, a 119 batting average this season. But when we look at what Maldi did against the Rangers and the ALCS last year, 125 batting average. So Maldi was kind of the same guy in that Rangers series as he was this season when he just got cut. So it just makes you think, what could a Yiner have done with those opportunities? Because you look back, he didn't start a single game at catcher in the postseason last year. He did start one game at DH in the Minnesota series, but no games at catcher. He, he pinch hit sporadically throughout the playoffs. But, you know, back to what Centron was talking about, feels like he was he was just pressing. He, he had to do something big to, to make an impression on Dusty, even though I, I don't know if there was anything he could have done to, to crack that lineup over Maldi. Dusty seemed pretty dug in. But I think, like, looking at this season now, bringing it to now, wh- what's good about what Yiner's doing this year compared to last year? And for me, the biggest thing is cutting down on the strikeouts. That yeah. has been huge because the walks really aren't all that different. He had last season, he had 11 walks and 377 plate appearances. This year, he has 450 plate appearances, only 18 walks. So a lot more opportunities this year. He's not walking a lot more, but look at the strikeouts. Like I said, 450 plate appearances this year, only 68 strikeouts and 377 plate appearances, a lot less. He had 74 strikeouts. So 
I mean, just look at those numbers right there, but it's coming at a cost, right? Now, his batting average significantly up this year, on base percentage significantly up this year, but the homers, they're down. He's what, 12 this season? And I mean, that's a big difference. He was at, let's see, 20, uh, 23 homers last year. So 12 to 23 in way less games. There was a lot more power with Yiner last season. OPS was higher. The slugging was higher. But this year, he has to protect Jordan, and he's doing it. How's he doing it? He's not striking out as much. He's getting more RBIs. Maybe he's not hitting the ball out of the yard as much, but he's not striking out as much, which is huge, especially in this Astros lineup. They don't like to strike out. They like to put the ball in play. So I'd just like to point out that some places, Yiner was actually better last season and couldn't really get a sniff at the starting job. But this year, he's he's refined his approach a little bit, and we're seeing some great results. Yeah, and it's funny because we've kind of seen the same thing with Jeremy Pena. You know, Jeremy Pena's power um, has you know not been what we thought it could be, but it's all uh, in the interest of trying to protect that plate a little bit more and not get fooled by those sl sliders outside. So he's not cheating on pitches as much. Um, it, and I think now uh, you're seeing him at this part of the season, it, at least on the current run he's on right now, you're seeing him be able to guess a little bit better on when the fastball is coming because he's earning those fastballs. And that all comes with experience. And so I think it's you do have to wonder, had they played my Yiner more last year, you have to wonder how much more comfortable he would have been at the plate uh, and how much more usable that could have made him in the postseason. Um, and it's funny because, you know, the the fan base, you know, the year before was screaming about Vasquez. You you, you brought up, uh, you know, Christian Vasquez and, and, and that, um, that two catcher lineup that Dusty seemed to be so uh, against using well he finally used it in game six of the world series and then what does vasquez do he adds on a huge insurance run uh after Jordan hits the home run and tacks on a really important uh run in that game and uh i think a lot of fans were screaming see this is why you should have played him more um again hindsight's 2020 um you know, but let's let's look beyond. You know, let's talk about the decision making because when this team got off to the slow start this season, we were wondering whether Espada would be a one and done manager, essentially playing the fall guy for some of the failures of how guys were executing and maybe the roster construction early. Um, with with Hader and Presley both, you know, they were struggling in their new roles. How have you noticed uh, with Espada? What have you noticed from him that has really helped Houston find the groove that they're now in? I think he's willing to adapt and try new things. You know, it almost feels like Dusty Baker kind of just set his lineup and that was it for most of last season. But Joe Espada, they bring a guy up. He gives him a try. Hey, Loperfito, go out there. See what you can do. Zach Dezenzo, we're going to start you. We'll give you a chance. When they called up Pedro Leon, he got some opportunities. Espada's, he's willing to try some things. Oh, maybe we'll play you at first base, Dezenzo, even though you really have hardly any any resume of doing this in the minor leagues he gives him a chance over there we finally saw yiner diaz playing some first base i just like that that he's willing to try different things he's not stuck in his ways as much so that's something i really like from espada is that you know it may not work but it's the regular season this is when we need to we need to figure this stuff out he wasn't locked in like well i guess you know I guess we're going to have to stay with Singleton every single day at first base. He was like, no, we'll try some different things. And, and this is the time to try it when it's not the postseason. See what you have. See what youth can give you. You know, it's sometimes that can be your friend. And Dana Brown talked about that at the trade deadline. Just, hey, we're going to bring some young guys up. The guys we didn't trade, we're going to see if they can give, them, give us a spark. We did that when we were in Atlanta and we had some good results. So that's kind of what I'm seeing there that – a spot is ready to we'll, we'll give it a chance if it doesn't work then we'll back off and use somebody else you see it in the bullpen he'll move guys around if they're performing well he'll play them if they're not so much then he'll give them some time off it's just i like seeing somebody that's that's not locked into a certain strategy especially with a team like this where there's just so many moving pieces this year this is this is a very different astros club and how much of that do you think cuz i think when i look at that i go well you know, there's something to be said about 
uh, hiring a manager like Dusty Baker, who has his way of doing things, he knows he's a first ballot Hall of Famer. And so he's going to stick with what's brought him to the dance. Whereas a guy like Joe is spotted, there's nothing that guarantees him a job tomorrow. And so like, whether it's, uh, you know, being inventive or it's just out of necessity, I, I wonder, would we be seeing Dusty Baker manage this team the same way? And the reason why I bring that up is because Dana Brown brought in Victor Caratini. Victor Caratini has been a really good bat for you. He's been a, you know one of your more reliable bats um, off the bench for you. We've already seen Joe Espada use a two catcher lineup where he's putting, uh, you know, Yiner in, in the DH role and, and with Caratini catching. He's basically finding a way to, you know, to keep some of his better bats in the lineup. I can't necessarily say if Dusty was still here, he'd be doing the same. I agree with you. There's, there's a lot of examples where you can think of that where it's just like. You know, we'll, we'll try this guy for a while. If it doesn't work, th then we're going to try somebody else. And and you have to do that. And it's been tough for a spotter with, you know, Kyle Tucker missing so much time this year. And of course, the season before Altuve missed a lot of time. You know, D Dusty had his challenges as well. Yep. But, you know, I just I, seeing a Pedro Leon get an opportunity, a Dezenzo, a Joey Loperfito. There's so many of these guys that a spot is like. Let's get them in there. If they don't have it, they don't have it. it. You know, I'm starting to wonder which has McCormick this year. You know, he's not playing well, but they're giving him the opportunity because they don't have a lot of other options. But another thing I'd point out is a spot is willingness to play Jordan in left field. If he feels like we need to use that DH spot for somebody for maybe for somebody like Yiner, or we need to use the DH spot for somebody else. You know, we saw Altuve get in there the other day to kind of get a day off his feet. So that's something that I, I just like that he, he's willing to try some things. And the other thing I think we're going to get to, right, is it feels like the front office and the manager are, are more in sync this year. Yeah, you know, We saw a lot of, you know, last year, Chaz McCormick was playing great. Seemed like the front office wanted him in there every day. Dusty, hey, I'm going to try to do Bond and I'm going to do things my own way. Whereas this year, it's different. It feels like Dana Brown sees things the same way as Joe Espada. When he brings a player up to the major league roster, Espada usually gives him a chance to play. He's not just going, oh, I'm not going to use this guy. I'm not going to tell this guy we traded for that he's not going to get any opportunities. He's willing to try things. And I think that's part of being a little younger, too. I, I think older managers get a little stubborn, a little stuck in their own ways. This isn't yep. the way how I did it all these years, and I've had all this success. You know, Espada doesn't have any of that. He's just like, I just want to do what works. And that's all that matters to me. And with Dana Brown, I think they see things the same way. And I look back too with the with Dusty Baker and all the click stuff. It makes sense that, you know, the Crane's baseball men like Jeff Bagwell and Reggie Jackson and Dusty Baker, I think they all kind of saw baseball the same way, where Click saw it more as a general manager and a little more modern baseball. And I think that's where Dana Brown is, even though he's a baseball man, too, and all that kind of stuff. He's also been in the front office for years, seeing how they do things in Atlanta. So I, I think he had more of a GM tilt to, to the way he saw this club, which Joe Espada kind of sees as well. So I just I think it's a more modern version of the Astros. And let's be real. People were going nuts that they needed to fire Joe Espada at the beginning of the season, bring Dusty out of retirement. Oh, you made a mistake by letting Maldi go. I mean, look at where we are now. Maldi, he basically got replaced by Yiner's backup right. and Corey Lee with the White Sox, and he got let go. And now Joe Espada, I like what he's doing. It doesn't hurt that the team's on an eight-game winning streak. But, I mean, look at all the pitching that got hurt this year, and they managed to get through it and get back on top of this division. You have to give Joe Espada some credit for that. Yeah, and it makes me think of um... – kind of the reporting that we heard of when, you know, Dusty and Click were here, uh, you know, how there seemed to be a power struggle. And that's by all reports. We obviously, we personally don't have inside information on that, but as well was well reported. Uh, one of those things was uh, trading for Contreras uh, yeah. and how that was uh, vetoed. Uh, you know, Click had a deal in place to uh, trade for Contreras and, uh, Dusty is as as was reported after the season. Dusty essentially, uh, with Crane, vetoed that trade because they didn't want to give up Jose Urquidy. Uh, look where you're at now. I mean, again, like 
it's hindsight. So, but like Arcadi's probably not going to play another game for this team. And you could have had, you know, a Wilson Contreras on your team. Would have that been the difference? I, I don't know. But obviously, Dusty was married to Maldi in a way that, I mean, you, you, you said it. Maldi had the same performance and usage over in Chicago, and he gets cut, and then their manager gets fired very quickly thereafter. There also doesn't seem to be as much uh, when 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 Click was gone and Dana Brown was in. It seemed like Dana Brown was I don't want to say using a bully pulpit, but he certainly was using the media to express his desires on how guys were getting used because we would hear him call somebody up, you know, like a singleton and say like, well, if we're going to call him up, we need to use him. And so you would, you would hear Dana almost um, lobbying for a guy or lobbying for a certain way of usage because you can imagine it's hard for a guy like Dana Brown, who has all the respect in the world for a guy like Dusty Baker, as we all do, by the way, like we all respect what Dusty Baker has done in his career and his accomplishments. And I stand by, I, I get killed for this in the comments every time I say this, I stand by the fact that uh, Dusty Baker was the right manager for that role and was a big part of the reason why Houston was able to win in 2022. So I, you know, I, I don't want to take anything away from Dusty. I think what this conversation is about is about how, um, you know, when you bring in someone that has a more fresh, um, perspective on things and who's not stuck into the things that have always worked for him besides, moving from one end of the dugout, dugout to the other, you know, to try to spur, you know, uh, offense. Joe Espada is using his guys and trying to find things that work instead of like, you know, just running, running a theory into the ground. Um, I'll give you the final word here. Well, I just sometimes trying the new person works out. Yeah. It just it just does. It doesn't always work out, but sometimes it does. And if if Yiner Diaz would have gotten more opportunities last season, maybe by the time they got to the playoffs, he would have been a little more mature in the role. And everybody's going to point to, oh, the pitchers needed Maldi and the defense was better. No, if you look at the numbers, the defense wasn't better with Maldi. The ERA of the team wasn't better with Maldi. Those are all just kind of, you know, kind of lies we told ourselves because we we thought that was the case. And Maldi had been good at some of those things earlier in his career, but the time was running out. And I just point to look at what the Rangers did who won the World Series. They called up Evan Carter in September, and then he's really great for them in September. They go into the postseason, you know, he hits 300, 917 OPS, 500 slugging, and helps them win a World Series. Now, he hasn't been very good this season, but it just shows you Sometimes you bring up the young guy and you can catch lightning in a bottle. You, you want to try that. Maybe Yiner Diaz could have been that lightning in a bottle in the postseason against the Rangers, but he never, you know, in pitch hitting, he didn't do that well. He only got one pinch hit hit. But, you know, as they point out in the article, Yiner was a lot better without guys on base last year because he was pressing so hard because he was trying to make a statement. But if he would have gotten more opportunities, maybe he would have felt a little more comfortable and it wouldn't have been I have to hit a home run every time I come up. We'll never know. Hindsight's, you know, 2020, all that kind of stuff. But I just wanted to point out, it looks like Diaz is coming into his own. Just recently in this last series on defense, maybe the pitchers are giving up too big of leads, but Yiner's putting the ball right on the bag, making some really nice throws, playing good defense. He's coming along. And, I mean, what else do you have to hit behind Jordan and protect him, you know, until Kyle Tucker comes back? So, I just I like what Espada and I like what Diaz are doing. I think they're set up here for a nice little window as we move forward with this organization. Yeah, it, it certainly does change my perspective on what the long term outlook is on this team. That's going to be it for this uh, episode of Stone Cold Strows. Uh, we'll have a new episode with Charlie drop on Monday. Uh, also, one more reminder, the three of us will be doing live reactions uh, following every Texans game this season, including a live reaction for this Saturday's Giants-Texans game. You can find that over on our other YouTube channel, Sports Map Texans, or in audio form at your favorite podcast app. Uh, for Josh, I'm Brandon. Thanks for watching. Go Strohs! Go Strohs!